Uh, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this session is all about uh, demonstrating to you certain evolutionary ideas that are taking shape at UIDAI. Uh, let me begin by giving you a did you know. Did you know that uh, the first Aadhaar was issued in September 2010 in this very state of Maharashtra? So now, in about a week from now, we shall be completing 12 years of the first Aadhaar being issued and entering our 13th year. This uh, last decade has uh, been highly eventful for uh, Aadhaar. Uh, apart from uh, successfully facing the legal challenges uh, at the Supreme Court and incorporating the essence of the Supreme Court judgment in the Aadhaar Act, uh, we've gone about uh, rolling out the most world's most sophisticated and the largest uh, digital identity program. And uh, in doing so, if I may add, allaying the fears of a lot of skeptics. Uh, as, the C as you just heard the CEO saying, we have enrolled 1.3 billion residents and authenticated them 81 billion times. Through direct benefit transfers by saving leakages, we have affected the savings of uh, more than 2.2 lakh crores uh, in uh, welfare distribution. Uh, these are astounding numbers by any means, and uh, I'm sure at the time of conception of Aadhaar, uh, these were unimaginable. So we've gone there, done that. Having achieved all of that, what next? Uh, it's perhaps time for Aadhaar to reimagine itself, to continue to stay ahead of the times. It is time for Aadhaar to adopt new technologies, to envision and to enable new use cases. It is time for Aadhaar to perhaps play a larger role in the India story, which is just about starting. It is time for Aadhaar 2.0. Now, as part of the, our vision for Aadhaar 2.0, there is a renewed focus, as the CEO just mentioned, on increasing the ease of living of residents. Uh, this is uh, being envisioned by uh, intensifying Aadhaar usage both in offline and online mode, both for the government as well as the non-government sectors. Now, uh, offline verification of Aadhaar has got uh, great potential, which is really waiting to be harnessed. It has the inherent strengths of being secure, private, and voluntary. As also, since uh, the Aadhaar number per se doesn't get shared in offline usage of Aadhaar, there is very little requirement of infrastructure being developed. Add to that the possibilities which open up when you start using the local face match, offline face matching of Aadhaar. So uh, the two modes of auth offline authentication, of offline verification, that is the secure QR code and the XML, are already part of the Aadhaar's uh, innovative product portfolio. Uh, Perhaps what is holding back the explosion, the exponential uh, adoption of offline uh, usage of Aadhaar is uh, the process friction that is there in the sharing of offline Aadhaar. And that is something which is easily addressed by technology. The ideas being presented to you today aim to address these very areas. They will get to the residents more services and benefits and therein lies the opportunity for you, our industry partners, the FinTech. Now, Dr. Vivek Raghavan, advisor UIDI, will be presenting these new ideas to you. These ideas are just taking shape at UIDI. At the moment, they are uh, ideas or proofs of concept, if you may. They would uh, undergo the complete process of uh, consultation with all stakeholders. That includes the public and, and, and the industries. Uh, before they are finally rolled out in the shape of applications. Today's demonstration is one such exercise uh, in making you, the fintech, aware of the latest developments in UIDI and also obtaining feedback from you. So now I hand you over to Dr. Vivek uh, Raghavan, who will uh, move forward with the presentation and with the demonstrations.
Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to tell you some of the new ways in which Aadhaar can be used. Uh, and I think that's, that's part of the entire Aadhaar 2.0 and reimagining new ways in which Aadhaar can be used. We already know, as, as, as CEO Sir said, we, we have 8 crore Aadhaar authentications every day. But, you know, there are still many more opportunities for usage of Aadhaar. How can we expand it to an order of magnitude greater than where it is being used today? And I think that our thought, and, and as, as CEO said, as part of Aadhaar 2.0, we are creating this sandbox of new ideas, of new ways of using this digital platform to provide different kinds of services to the citizens of the country. And I want to actually uh, show some examples uh, of how this can be done. And this is really, and, 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 and this is really to, to actually uh, rekindle the imagination of how Aadhaar can be used. And when we do this, we have to look at three things. That how can we allow residents to use their own Aadhaar to avail services? And the focus, the principles need to be simplicity. It needs to be simple, extremely easy to use. The focus needs to be privacy, right? Especially that privacy is, is, is one of the critical things. And of course, security. And we've figured out some ways in which Aadhaar can be used by a much larger set of people in the country by leveraging three technologies that Aadhaar already has. The first one is offline KYC verification. I don't know, I mean, if this is something that Aadhaar had launched about two to three years ago, and it actually provides a way by which people can verify Aadhaar offline. And, uh, and now it is something which is being used by some people, but, but, it's, uh, but I think the usage there is that it's, uh, we want to simplify the usage of this. The second part is that Aadhaar has announced that we have this new kind of uh, the, this new modality of matching called local face matching, which actually happens locally uh, on your device. And of course, we're trying to combine these two with the existing M Aadhaar application to actually unlock completely new experiences through which Aadhaar can be used. And that's what I hope to show you in the next uh, half an hour. Coming back to the core principles, Right? The first core principle is simplicity. Simplicity is, of course, that we need to have a very different kind of resident user experience for the Aadhaar. That's number one. And the second thing, of course, is that I should be able to use Aadhaar offline. So I don't need to have any connectivity to UIDR, to CIDR to do that. The second part, of course, is privacy. Especially when you're using Aadhaar on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't really want to actually use the Aadhaar number to, 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 uh, to actually avail the service. The next point is that we'll establish, you, can, you have now the ability to establish proof of presence in, in Aadhaar through local face matching. And finally, this KYC itself can, can actually be done in a granular manner so that you can provide granular control of Aadhaar, uh, of Aadhaar usage by the resident. So therefore, if I want to reveal only my name and photograph, then I can actually reveal only a granular portion of my KYC information. And of course, the consent is the other core part of the entire Aadhaar experience. So the FAIR, it's a, it provides a systematic way of locally storing user consent that people And finally, it's very interesting that when all these pieces come together, you actually come up with, a, uh, with something which is equivalent to a two-factor authentication. The credential itself, the offline KYC, is secure because it is digitally signed for authenticity. And also, uh, there are mechanisms by which now this can be shared in an encrypted manner, so it can only be used by the entity who has requested it. So we'll talk about four different use cases that are related, that, that actually come out of these group of, uh, uh, these sets of technologies that we're talking about. So the first method is actually offline KYC through deep linking. And here, what is it that we are trying to do? It allows a resident
to share their own offline KYC within any entity app on their own smartphone. And that is the core principle, that you can share your offline KYC on your own smartphone. And who can use this? This is any resident who actually has MRTAR installed on their phone, as well as the entity application running on the same phone. So therefore, the prerequisite is, of course, that MRTAR would have been installed and the user profile would have been created. And the user profile can not just be created for the resident themselves, but it may also be for any other family member who may use the same smartphone. So let's look a little deeper as to how this would work. The first step is the resident would initiate the collection of this offline KYC from an entity app. An entity app can be anything. It could be an e-commerce app. It could be a mobility app. It could be an event or travel booking app. And the only thing, the primary thing that the resident needs to provide is they need to provide their name, and they need to see whether this KYC requires a proof of presence or not. There are some other factors there, which are all kind of, which, which certainly can be derived from the entity app, things like encryption and uh, you know, um, app name and transaction ID and other things. But the core thing is actually your, your name and your proof of presence. Now, when this happens, through automatically through deep linking, what happens is that you, you, your control is transferred from the entity app to MRTAR. And as long as the name matches the profile which is available in MRTAR, a request for consent to share your KYC shows up. And if you, once, you ex once you provide your consent, then what happens is if proof of presence is required, you end up doing a local face matching, which actually says that it is indeed you who is providing this consent. And if you don't have proof of presence is not required, as in many applications, you don't need to do that. And then finally, the control gets returned back to the entity app, and the offline KYC is now within the entity. So this is literally as simple as how, uh, you know, envisaged as how simple it, uh, this, this entire process is. So I'll go through a couple of videos uh, which actually show how this thing works. We've actually done a POC of this, and uh, we'll show how this thing works. Can we play the first video, please? Sharing offline KYC with an entity through deep linking with proof of presence. The resident needs to install the M Aadhaar app and the entity application on their own smartphone. Aadhaar offline KYC is initiated by the resident himself using the entity app. The resident enters his or her name and clicks on proof of presence. Through deep linking, the control shifts to the M Aadhaar app. If the name in the offline KYC request matches an already created profile in M Aadhaar, consent of the resident is requested. The consent of the resident is recorded. Since proof of presence is required, a local face match is initiated. The local face match captures the face image, performs a liveness check and matches the captured face against offline KYC photo. Finally, digitally signed and encrypted offline KYC information is shared with the entity application. Please note that the Aadhaar number of the resident was not required anywhere in the process. So I think this shows you how simple this could be, right? So now we'll, let's take the same thing where you don't even need proof of presence. So certainly in certain cases, KYC using proof of presence may be important. So let's play the second video. It's actually uh, quite similar, but it's simpler. Sharing offline KYC through deep linking with no proof of presence. The process is initiated by the resident using the entity app, which is requesting Aadhaar offline KYC. The resident enters his or her name and clicks no on proof of presence. Now control shifts to the M Aadhaar app through deep linking. The consent of the resident is recorded in M Aadhaar app. Then digitally signed and encrypted offline KYC information is shared with the entity application. Please note that the Aadhaar number of the resident was not required anywhere in the process. So this shows you how simple it could be. And I think this, is, this can actually unlock so many different applications where Aadhaar can be used, and, and you, can, you can take the benefit of both offline KYC verification 
as well as the local face matching capability within Aadhaar. So let's move to a second use case. And the second use case is slightly, is slightly different. In this case, the entity app is running on another device, which is controlled by an operator. And the mAdhaar app is still the, is running on your own smartphone. So of course, the same requirement that the profile needs to be created on mAdhaar. And of course, the, the, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the requirement is there. So then in this case, what happens is the operator collects the name of the resident. Right? The difference here is the program is the, the, the process is initiated on the business device, right? Whatever that is, maybe a tablet, maybe a PC, maybe something. And then once you do that, the actually the entity application generates a QR code. And this QR code is actually the offline KYC request. So it has everything that's there, which is previously generated through deep linking. In this case, what's happening is you have name and proof of presence are the two key concepts. Beyond that, there are encryption keys and app names, et cetera. The other thing, of course, is a callback URL as to where actually the offline KYC needs to be shared. That's the only difference in the request that is there in the, in the previous set of cases and the ones that are here. So in this case, what happens? Once that happens, the control will shift to mAdhaar. And if the name matches, and uh, if the name matches, the consent will be collected. And after that, the local face match will be triggered if proof of presence is required. And of course, upon successful completion, mAdhaar will, will, will use the callback URL to upload the offline KYC. And of course, user consent is again locally shared uh, within the mAdhaar app. And of course, the entity uh, displays the offline KYC. Now the offline KYC has reached the operator's device. And that's the core thing. Authentication, as, I'm sorry, the local face match and the KYC sharing still is happening on your own device, but it gets shared to the other device which is run by. So uh, let's play uh, these videos. The first video is actually uh, with the, uh, you know, where you're sharing it through QR code with face match. Let's play the video, please. Sharing offline KYC using a QR code with proof of presence. Let's see how Aadhaar offline KYC can be shared on a device controlled by an operator. The process is initiated on the entity app on the operator device where the resident name is entered and proof of presence is selected. The entity app generates and displays a QR code that contains the offline KYC request. Using resident smartphone mAdhaar app, the resident scans the QR code. Consent of the resident is recorded in mAdhaar app. Since proof of presence is required, a local face match is initiated. The local face match captures the face image, performs a liveness check, and matches the captured face against offline KYC photo. Finally, digitally signed and encrypted offline KYC information is shared with the entity application through a callback URL specified in the request. Please note that the Aadhaar number of the resident was not required anywhere in the process. So you get the drift. I mean, the idea is that this can work not only when both the apps are on the same device, it also works when they are on different devices. Let's play the same version without the proof of presence and followed by actually the KYC content history video. Let's play those two in, in order, please. Sharing offline KYC using a QR code with no proof of presence. The process is initiated on the entity app on the operator device where the resident name is entered and proof of presence is set to no. The entity app generates and displays a QR code that contains the offline KYC request. Using resident's smartphone, Amadhar app, the resident scans the QR code and consent of the resident is recorded in Amadhar app. Digitally signed and encrypted offline KYC information is shared with the entity application through a callback URL specified in the request. Please note that the Aadhaar number of the resident was not required anywhere in the process. Offline KYC Consent History The resident has the ability to review their own offline KYC consent history stored locally on their device. 
open DM Aadhaar app and click on Consent KYC Share History. The face icon indicates where proof of presence was part of the offline KYC request. So the important thing is locally the resident is able to create, keep the, uh, their own con the, the consent history of all the consent that they have provided. So that's, that's one of the key things because consent being one of the core parts. So changing gears a little bit, we're going to talk about a slightly different use case and uh, a slightly different use case, though, the, though many of the components of that use case are, quite, are actually quite similar. So one of the things that Aadhaar has many AUAs today, right? And we said that there are over 8 crore authentications that happen today. But we want to actually expand the AUAs, the ability to leverage this local face authentication which Aadhaar is, is launching. Now, why would this be important? This is critical to expand the reach of Aadhaar authentication. So, for example, why, why would one want to do it? Sometimes it could be an exception process when fingerprint authentication fails. It could also be a situation where lots of places you have a limited number of endpoint or fingerprint devices, and you want to actually do some local face matching even when I don't have an endpoint device. And of course, the third kind of situation could be when the authentication, when the network fails, because it's a purely local authentication. And what is it actually doing when you do a local face match? The, lo the live image of the resident is matched with the photograph in the AUA signed document which leverages local face matching. And anyone can actually use it. You really don't need any phone or device. The AUA, of course, needs to have a photograph of yours, which may be through a prior KYC or some other means. And what happens is, of course, there is only one device here, which is the operator's device. And uh, it is the operator's device. And the operator's device basically runs uh, and calls the, the, the local face matching. The control is shifted to local face matching. And based on the result of the local face matching, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, you can understand the proof of presence of that resident at a given place. Let's play a video. Uh, let's, let's play a video showing what happens here. Local face match capability for Aadhaar AUAs. This use case is performed completely on the operator's device. The resident does not need any device for this verification. It is assumed the AUA has obtained the resident photo through eKYC in the past or some other means. The entity app has a list of residents who can be verified on this device mapped to an entity ID. The local face match captures the face image, performs a liveness check and matches the captured face against the AUA signed photograph using UIGAI Face RD app. Resident proof of presence process is completed upon successful local face match. So, so think about that. I think this is, this is some way that we can actually significantly expand uh, the usage of Aadhaar even by existing AUAs in places where maybe they don't have devices, or you can use it as an inclusion thing where fingerprint authentication fails, or uh, you know, even scenarios where network kind of scenarios. So therefore, that's, that's actually a, a whole new set of ways by which other authentication can be expanded. And finally, we'll move to a fourth kind of use case where this same set of technologies is actually used in an access control kind of use case. And the, the whole point of an access kind of control use case could be secure entry to an airport, to a railway station, to a stadium, to an office, by combining basically three concepts, the offline KYC, which we've talked about before, the event details, right? Is this, I'm going to go and watch this cricket match, the event details, and of course, a local face match, which happens on an access control device. And the interesting thing is, who can use it? Any resident having an M Aadhaar and a booking, app for, for, for whatever service, for whatever event uh, that they want to. So what happens here? Two things happen. Firstly, the KYC sharing happens. The KYC sharing is just like what we talked in the first use case. 
So it's, a, it's through, the, through a deep linking because both the booking app and the M Aadhaar app are on the same device. And then, but once this KYC happens, what the, what the entity app would do in this particular case is they will generate a QR code. And the QR code actually contains a link to the, e to the event details as well as an encrypted version of the shared offline KYC. So that's really the, the combination. You're linking the event to the person, that this person is attending this event. And then when you come at the access entry point, the, the thing is that you read this QR code, which talks about, which is the gate pass to check into this event. Well, as soon as you do that, you'll, you'll, you'll be triggering a local face, face auth. And on, on success of the local face auth, entry can be granted. So we'll watch this through a set of two videos. The first video is something which happens, which is the registering for the event. This happens not at the location. It happens at your home or happens at some point before the event takes place. And the second part is that what you do when you hit the access control gate and how this works, how this could work. So can we play, sorry, can we play the video, please? Offline KYC for event registration. A resident can use Aadhaar Offline KYC to register for an event and generate a QR code-based gate pass for secure entry. The resident needs to install the Aadhaar app and the event booking application on their own smartphone. Aadhaar Offline KYC is initiated by the resident himself using the event booking app. The resident enters his or her name. Now, control shifts to the Aadhaar app through deep linking. The consent of the resident is recorded in Aadhaar app. Digitally signed and encrypted offline KYC information is shared with the book application. A QR code gate pass is generated by the booking application, which links the offline KYC photo with event details. This is controlled through local face match. A resident can get secure entry into the cricket stadium using the QR code gate pass generated at the time of event registration. The QR code gate pass on the resident's booking app is scanned and a local face match on the access control device is initiated. Local face match on an access control device is used in this process. The local face match captures the face image, performs a liveness check and matches the captured face against offline KYC photograph. Check-in and entry is allowed if the local face match is successful and event details are validated. Aadhaar-based event registration and secure check-in is achieved without sharing the Aadhaar number of the resident. So, finally, I think these are all ideas that we are working on POC. Actually, but many of these concepts, both uh, uh, offline KYC, M Aadhaar, and face match are all things that Aadhaar has been has been has had for a while. Uh, Aadhaar is going to put out a document outlining this initiative, and there will be a request for uh, request for comments, and it will be on the UID website. And to comment on this initiative, to get feedback as to what you know, uh, as to what can be changed to make it more useful, or any concern that may be there for this initiative. And as also to sign up, a very limited uh, sign up of, for early access to these uh, capabilities so that to, be, to, be, to launch at the time of the launch, uh, we have an email address. And we would request that uh, anybody who wants to be part of these initiatives uh, can, can, can communicate with us both comments as well as ability to be part of this. I really think that these things can change the the, the, the quantum in which people use Aadhaar in their lives, and it is done in a manner while respecting the three principles, right, of simplicity, privacy, and security. So uh, that's all, and uh, I'm open for some questions. Yeah. Can someone help to see? I, I'm not able to see who has questions. Yeah. Yes. We're selling a production date of 31st December. Mm -hmm. When is the pre-pod expected? Is it already there in pre-pod or? 
so it is not already there in pre-prod, but, but uh, I think that uh, uh, we, will, we will rapidly bring it to pre-prod, because all the individual con con components of these are actually uh, kind of there, putting it together and getting out. Uh, we, will, we will announce a pre-prod date in, 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 in our uh, document. Yes. Will this yes. work on specific phones or uh, be capable on all phones? No, the intent is to make this work on all phones. Yes, well, this is nothing to do with specific phones. The intent is to work on all phones. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the one uh, thing specifically as far as, which may be a little later, maybe this local face match on iOS, Android, all Android phones certainly will work. And uh, the other part probably will work in one, on, on everything. Yes. Hello. Uh, I'm Avni Zingade, and I'm from Tata Capital. So the question is that will the local fa face match be extended to eKYC authentication? No. So as face as a modality is something that uh, that UIDI is 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 kind of at a kind of at a at a, um, a, a pilot stage today. Uh, so whether that is a separate talk with online authentication. Being available as face is something which is a, which is something which is already in progress and it is at a pilot stage and how how that will get extended to other AUAs is something that's a process that is going on. Uh, this is a parallel track because this is not uh, this is not a uh, online process, right? Because you are actually only matching the credential against the person who are standing in front of there. It is not actually matching the. Uh, uh, it is not uh, going back to the uh, going back to UIDI. So this is an offline. That's the key concept of offline being there. Thank you. Uh, hi, I just wanted to know: uh, uh, Is AO KUO license required to use the uh, MADAR or offline-based KYC for so, the entities? No. Yeah. So, so the point the the point is that it it is not required to be an AUA or KUA license for this. Having said that, in the initial process, it will be a controlled rollout. So there will be specific people. Uh, you know, so you'll have to sign up with us to actually do this. And uh, after that, we'll see how that goes. But the, there is not a requirement of an AUA, KUA license for this offline requirements. Now, the, the use case three was specifically for AUAs, if you noted that. So, uh, sir, uh, Apoor Prasad from HDFC Bank. This, this yes. side. So you mentioned that the uh, consent will be locally recorded in the M Aadhaar app. Yes. What happens if I move to a new phone, uninstall the app? Will the consent be there or it will be erased? No, it will be. It's a, in the end, the, the consent is local, right? So therefore, if you are talking about your own thing, it is, it is your, you are controlling the consent. Now, of course, if the, because the person has done it from their M Aadhaar, and the person has done using proof of presence. If you are the entity, of course, you, you, the response that comes from there could be treated as the consent as far as you are concerned if you are a business, right? But as far as the resident is concerned, it is local. It is important that we don't want to uh, kind of uh, uh, record that, right? So that is controlled, that is owned, by, that is owned by, the, uh, by the owner itself. But if you have a good suggestion on that, we are willing to hear. Hi, sir. Hmm. Prabhu here. Uh, your left side. Yes. Yeah. So do we have any plan on future phone users? So how they can use for offline verification? So explicitly, this thing is not a feature phone uh, based thing. So therefore, this, this particular use case is very much uh, smartphone focused, except for use case three, which does not uh, require any phone at all, as far as the resident is concerned. Uh, one of the things that feature phone users, if there are a family members where certain people have the uh, you know, smartphone, other people have the feature phones, you could use it. And as you know, in MRR, up to five profiles can actually be stored on those. And uh, so this kind of thing could be used uh, using that scheme for, by people who don't have a smartphone. But to use, especially the use cases, one, the first, the second, and the fourth use case, you do need a smartphone. Having said that, uh, Aadhaar knows very well that, that we do want to expand and, and come up with uh, use cases that can be done in feature phones. So we look forward to comments about how such a thing could be useful or how such a variation on such a thing could, make, could be made to work on a feature phone. Sure, sir. Thank you. Hi, sir. Hmm? Sir, yeah, straight. Devesh here. 
Uh, so since this is uh, authentication is happening by UIDI, uh, is there a possibility where uh, the face match which is happening, the liveness thing, uh, will be considered as a verification part and can be considered as a full KYC? Is there any talks going on with the regulator RBI on this? So, so I, I don't think that uh, I, I don't think that uh, I can answer that question right now as far as the the but. Uh, the, the, what is happening here is this an offline KYC verification. It is certainly a proof of presence that Aadhaar is saying that this person is actually present here. Uh, whether that is, that's certainly part of the, uh, that's, that's what is happening as far as this is concerned. What other agencies are using or other things, this is, these are discussions which need to happen. It's still an early stage. I think we want to put the concept out. We want to see whether people think that this is something useful. I mean, let me ask a question. The things that we talked about today, can I get a show of hands to see, this, is this something that will move Aadhaar usage forward? I mean, yeah. So I, I see a very large number of hands. So that's really good to hear. And so therefore, we will work with people. We will do the consultations. And we will kind of uh, you know, figure out how to make it work. I, I, and and, and uh, it's a good question we raise, and we will, we will uh, clarify that point. Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, as mentioned that uh, the local face match would work. In, so I would know that in case the biometric fails, mm -hmm. what would be the chances of uh, success for uh, local face match in such situations? So, uh, I mean, let me answer at the risk of uh, boring some people. Let me ask, ans answer uh, uh, the question a little technically. Uh, one of the interesting uh, kind of uh, uh, demographics where fingerprint failures are a little bit higher are actually people who are older, right? As more senior citizens, as you move to, uh, you know, above, you know, 60, 70, and things like that. It's very interesting that face authentication is a contraindicator. Actually, works exceptionally well in that uh, demographic. So, therefore, I think it is uh, in the end. Uh, you know, we think that there is uh, not a strong correlation between uh, having poor fingerprints and, and 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 your face dramatically changing. So, therefore, we believe that this is actually going to be extremely. Uh, you know, the chances are extremely high. But I will uh, let the. Uh, you know, let's see. We are rolling it out, and we'll find out what, what we learn. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Uh, so, would want to applaud Aadhaar for the beautiful initiatives that it's taking. Two questions I have. First is, would we be able to operate in the areas where network is very weak? Because we operate in some of the very rural parts of the country. So what would be the network of a requirement for the, these features to operate? Yeah, so in, in, in reality, because when you're talking about deep linking between uh, two apps, now the question is, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the app itself may be forcing some connectivity that I can't control. But the deep linking process itself does not require any connectivity, right? And the face auth is also completely local, so it is not something that needs uh, anything else other than uh, any connectivity in that sense. But having said that, most things you know when the connectivity is really bad, things that you think work uh, really well uh, you know, may not work. So you, you may have to design carefully. And we may also have certain blind spots where we thought that you know, maybe uh, connectivity was not needed, but it's really needed. But having said that, nothing in the principle of this requires connectivity. Uh, second, sir, my question was on the fourth use case that you used, yes. where uh, the Aadhaar can be used as a uh, as a uh, instrument to get entry into a movie ticket, a movie ticket or a stadium. Mm -hmm. So there, I, as an Aadhaar holder, would I be able to control the information that should be shared with that app? Uh, because absolutely. I would not be comfortable sharing my address with the uh, book my shows or any other apps. Yeah. In fact, the most, the minimum, the information for most of those kinds of things. The only information that we recommend having showing is actually the name and the uh, name and the photograph. That's all. Nothing else other than that is needed because obviously the photograph is needed because that is what is required for the local face match. The name is the entity by which you are defining as the person who is uh, who is uh, 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 you know uh, seeking entry into the uh, into the event. Okay. So, Thank you, sir. So, uh, for those who are staying at a rental place. Mm -hmm. 
Aadhaar is, uh, you know, to put uh, uh, address entries in the rental, it is a very cumbersome process because you have to visit the collector, you have to take the owner's uh, permission and then, you know, there is a possibility they are taking money and then you register it at Aadhaar. So can you simplify the process where address, people do not have permanent address? So yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I think uh, as part of, let me just answer it, that today's solutions are not solving that problem. But having said that, this is certainly improving, this capability is certainly part of the Aadhaar 2.0 sandbox. And hopefully in the next few months, we'll be coming up with some clever ways to do this, which simplifies this and makes it much more digital. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to understand uh, when the offline EKYC is being shared, mm -hmm. as the gentleman already asked a question that the entire information should not be shared, where yes. I may not be able to or would not like to share my date of birth or mm -hmm. full address. But is it possible that when you sh uh, send the request, that time itself, customer can decide what information I want to share as a part of this offline uh, yeah. thing? Or even the entity can say that I want this much information and then based on that the customer can decide whether I should give a consent mm -hmm. so that the control is still with the resident yeah. about what should be shared, what should not be shared and the entity can also decide yeah. whether they really need an entire data or a part of data. Yeah, so in, indeed what you are saying, it's the second, second method is the method that we are talking about. The entity will say that I need X, Y, Z information. Now the consent comes to you. Right? Supposing if somebody is saying for entrance to a, a stadium, I need your date of birth or I need your address, you may choose not to give the consent. Right? And so therefore, and there will be typical reasonable consents that are there. So in the end, it is in the hand. That is why we are saying granular consent capability will be there with the resident. And that is the intent that clearly, the, for certain kinds of applications, you don't need to share. Uh, all your KYC information, and you should share only the minimal amount required to achieve that process. Yeah, good evening, sir. Mm. Uh, this is Karthik here. Mm. Uh, is there is any plan or methodology adopted by UIDI if the, for sharing the offline KYC when there is a no concern from the customers, citizens? No, UIDI is a fundamentally, we will, we will not share the consent without the consent of the citizen. I think uh, that is, uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't think we have any such plan. And, and, uh, um, and, and so therefore that is, that is not something that, that uh, uh, I think that we will consider. Sir, this is for India. What are we doing for Bharat? The segment beyond self-service for which Aadhaar is made the AEPS enabled mass market yes. where the gentleman just spoke about. Mm -hmm. So how does the self-service conducive segment mm -hmm. and beyond that the marginalized subsidized segment use this? Yeah, no, no, so, so, you, so I think that at one level, uh, at one level you are right and our, but I would say that use case three, when you look at it very specifically, it is actually the main use is to do two things. One is, to ensure that you can do Aadhaar uh, verification at various places where you could not do it before because the device was not there or because where the network was not there. And you do it for people for whom authentication was failing. That is also something which is there. So therefore, in the end, when we are talking about Aadhaar being used at a larger scale, it is our AUAs and it is through the various schemes that we are using Aadhaar that uh, that we will reach out to those kinds of people. But the two differences is that the scale, the number of people who can be reached out is increased even in that area. Having said that, you know, if someone has really good ideas of how to expand Aadhaar usage to Bharat, right? I think this is one of the core uh, goals why we are here in UIDI. So we will be most welcome to hear uh, any suggestions. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, we'll take the last question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, mm. Just wanted to check if you see a use case for marrying the uh, e-rupee initiative that has been launched with the particular use case that you just uh, presented. 
in order to make sure that the benefits uh, are getting transferred to the right uh, people. And I feel that if we are able to solve for the uh, feature phone uh, journey of Aadhaar authentication, uh, the way you have just described it, uh, I feel it would be fairly powerful. So thank you, ma'am, for your comments. Uh, I don't think I, I, I have thought, we have thought seriously about some of these things, but we will. I think uh, both good points that you have raised. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, very much, sir. Which one, sir? Excuse me? I'm so sorry. We have, we are completely one, run out of one, time. One, one last, one last. Uh, sir. Okay. I'm Major Karthik. Okay. Yeah. This is regarding the consent revoking. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, akin to where we have in Android apps, we remove the permissions even though we, we ac give grant access while installing. Is there anything akin to that in uh, offline authentication? So the, con the purpose of consent is for a single sharing, right? Okay. So once you share the data, I okay. mean, the data has been shared, right? Okay. So revoking the consent, for, because you, and it is for a particular app, for a particular reason, yes. you have shared it. Yes, so sir. now the data has already gone there. If I revoke the consent, I can't delete it from the place where it's gone, right? So but let's think about it. If you have interesting ideas, I'm, I'm open to hearing uh, uh, all uh, those kinds of things as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Dr. Vivek, I must thank you for your patience and for answering all those questions there. And thank you indeed, uh, dear audience members, for your valuable questions. Can we have a huge round of applause one more time? I'm sure this workshop was absolutely informative, and I think the next time we'll do the registrations, we might as well use MRDAR to make it super <laughs> seamless for all of our members of the audience.